Good evening, and welcome to the Cope and Seethe live podcast with me, your host, Giga Chad Mackay. What's going on? There's no one here. You're all watching the game. I, I pause watching the game and no one's fucking here. That's pretty typical. I might as well check what the fucking score is then. You bastards. Nil nil. No surprise there. Anyway, yeah, well, I'm hoping uh, a few of you are settling in. What's going on? I mean, this is what happens when you turn up too late too often, isn't it, I suppose? People uh, start thinking that's that's the norm, I guess. Well, I've got a few things to get through uh, tonight. Mostly it's a bit of an incel my ride heavy evening ahead, which I'm sure most of you will be ecstatic about I'm sure if anyone wants to spin that wheel it is of course always available and I think at the moment what what did I price it as like five I think a fiver so bargain uh, there's also a face rating system that is a prize that can be won and if you if you happen to win that and you don't want it then I will say you can just send a pick of whoever you want <laughs> and we'll just judge them quietly and yeah well that's pretty much it there, there's one film to talk about which i might do now considering it's pretty dead in here at the moment um mind you i'm not sure if that's gonna make people stay to be honest but yeah well we can have a bit of a chill and relax until then so, uh, how's it all going? <coughs> Fucking these streams, man. I spend all day getting these things ready. And then I just get the same old wankers. Well, I mean, well, fuck it. I don't know what to talk about then at the moment. Um, what should I go? I should go into movie talk, I guess. Get that out of the way as people are coming in. So yeah, American fiction. Um, this is, I think it's on Netflix. I, I'm not sure. Uh, I had a little look at it previously and I was kind of intrigued and yeah overall I, I thought it was quite a funny watch uh, it's a good decent comedy and it's basically about a guy who's a writer um, an African-American writer which is mentioned quite a bit or at least it's kind of part of the plot because he actually writes literature but there's one scene where he goes into like the store and sees his stuff under like American African American <laughs> studies and he's like this is this is the only thing you know black in this book is the text kind of thing it's got nothing to do with it and that kind of stuff but then during his kind of outrage at this he he pens a kind of really stereotypical urban fiction trashy kind of novel and that typically gets a lot of attention and gets picked up immediately and then uh he has to deal with this kind of kind of um i guess backfiring on him in a way even though he's always wanted the kind of fame although he does write it with a um <clears throat> pseudonym so no one knows it's him uh, but primarily the story is kind of your typical suburban american family type of uh, deal which I kind of thought was a bit ironic considering like one of the focal points is making a commentary on like the black culture and how it's ex exploited and whatnot. But then the film itself or the, the story outside of that was very familiar <laughs> and reminded me of just like white picket fence suburban tales where, you know, you've got your family trials and tribulations uh he's got the gay brother 
his sister died in it as well and his mother's not well so he's kind of dealing with all these things i just thought there was a kind of yeah i don't maybe that irony was intended i'm not sure but i don't think so because the most most of the comedy was coming from the fact that he hated this kind of typical black stereotype and then yeah penning it himself he actually that was the first time you know he actually got any acclaim and sold things that you know would get made into movies and all this kind of stuff it was pretty funny i, I did quite enjoy it and he's he's kind of going through a slight dilemma because he's uh if you're familiar with the lie kind of trope he has this like this belief system kind of gets a bit exploited as it goes forward or exposed more and he has to kind of deal with that um but it's it's a little bit i suppose somewhat safe i guess um i mean it's like your typical middle to upper class type of family like everyone else is a doctor in it he's like a super clever dude uh, and the whole family was and all this kind of stuff so yeah decent though I, I quite enjoyed it i thought some of the um the movie dipped a little bit here and there just in terms of pacing but overall i thought it was actually a pretty well constructed and the, the comedy was good because it has like this overly woke kind of girl at the beginning because he's also a teacher because of course he is he's a writer uh at a college or wherever it is and he's talking about one of these flannery flannery o'connor pieces that had nigger in the title and it's on the wall and this like blue head overweight chick is start saying how the words making her uncomfortable and all this kind of stuff and he's like well i got over it <laughs> so shut the fuck up basically and then that gets him in trouble so he had a little bit of a a dig at this um yeah i mean uh, is it even a culture nowadays i don't really know what to think of it in a lot of uh regards because even taking the piss out of it seems to be like doing nothing in terms of actually changing anything it's not like there's um I don't know. I've seen a few things about the whole the whole woke thing kind of dying down and all this, and I just like, is it? I, I mean, I see it everywhere all the time. Like it's it's relentless, and so long as like this victimhood kind of movement c continues, I don't really see it shifting anytime soon because it's an easy way for people to get attention and to dismiss other people because they can just keep blaming it on their mental afflictions or whatever. So it's just like. A never-ending cycle pretty much hey hey you weren't here motherfucker so uh there'd be none of that i, dro I dropped into it because i thought you lot was taking your time coming in But yeah, I mean, we can, I can, that's, there's your movie review. You were bitching about it last week, so I just thought I'd get it out of the way. And then uh, we can get into the good stuff. Now, in case any of you are wondering, the wheel is still, like, look at that. Look at that transition. I mean, it's begging for a spin. Five pound a pop nowadays. That's all it'll cost you. So, uh, where's Hawk, actually? Where is that? beady-eyed little prick <laughs> is he, are you drinking is he not there typical i live in a fucking capital of well yeah i kind of do but even the whole country's like yeah terrible no it doesn't just it doesn't <laughs> although i'm really tempted to watch a film called the american society of magical negroes <laughs> actually the title <laughs> i saw some guy reviewing it this black guy and he was just pissing himself laughing at it just going like what what the fuck is this like why why would you call it the american society of magical negroes and even in the in that story it's got the guy who was in that fucking awful movie um voyeurs with Sidney Sweeney, the the kind of mocker coffee black guy. He, he's more white than fucking I am, <laughs> to be honest. But yeah, he's slightly black. 
and uh, I think he was in the Pikachu film so he's in that and then there's this like subplot in it where he fancies this white chick <laughs> it's just like but he doesn't want to like pursue it because in this kind of parody within a parody if that would upset the white people and then they they'd lose their magical powers so it's it's in a way the premise doesn't actually sound that bad it sounds it sounds hilarious but it's all it's inadvertent and not in the way it wants to be because it, it's just fucking stupid basically and uh yeah as this review was going on about it, it's like if you're going to go down that route then go fucking berserk with it go nuts because it's like it's already testing the waters a little bit and yeah i mean it's interesting because there's there's been a lot of those types of movies there's one called white people even the one i was talking about was that was more like your high brow kind of version of it but it's, it's there's been a shit ton of them basically and i'm not really sure why it's almost like underhanded racism at that point i kind of think because it's like oh we're gonna make loads of black films but they can only ever really comment on like how white people are with them <laughs> and it's just i don't know and he, whether that's comical satirical or serious or a drama or whatever it's kind of just the same thing over and over and over again does that not perpetuate racial issues i mean i've said this before and i've been made to feel like a, a complete prick for saying it but it's like i don't get it you know i really don't get it uh, in that regard it's like and because I mainly because I maybe I need to start saying this, I don't really you know race is bullshit basically. It's like complete nonsense, and yet people identify with it in very um, destructive manners to the point where they they like it if you're speaking well of them, even in the stereotypical. But then you're an arsehole if you speak badly, and it's like but you can't have it both ways if you're gonna you know. If you want it that way, then you have to take the rough with the smooth, if you want, if that's the right way to say it, but. Oh, is that, um, I think I heard something about this. Is that like, if you post something online, even if it's like shit posting, you can actually get and maybe arrested or banned or I don't know. I mean, it's, there's something pretty severe. I only saw it briefly in a feed. Like some dude was saying like, oh, when this is put forward, I won't be able to do what I do anymore. Even though he had like two videos, but I think he was doing it mostly on uh, Twitter. So I, I don't know the ins and outs of that. Hitler pilled. <laughs> if I if I could pay for everyone to take like a twenty three and Me test, I'd be fascinated to uh, go into that. There, there's tiny differences, maybe, but most of them. I mean, I think black people are more susceptible to having a sickle cell, but it's you know, and but even genetically speaking, like the the brown as a color not just skin tone but you know eyes and whatnot is the dominant kind of gene whereas you know blue and green and whatnot's recessive so i mean but in terms of actually like a label of course it's bollocks you know it's just another thing that you just attach to it As a writer, am I afraid of AI replacing authors? Um, not really. I'm, I'm, I'm more concerned with... I'm actually more concerned how people interact with computers, to be honest. Because I think it's already at a point where everyone's mental. And the way people relate to things and... You know, I watched this Femcell documentary that was on. It was on. It's a Channel Four piece, but on YouTube. And I was just thinking, like, these people were just 
fucked from the beginning you know like it was so over because if you've ever read um this kind of separate point but i was thinking of this earlier the collector by john fowles and that's about that's about a dude like a proper incel in like the 50s pretty much i can't remember exactly what era it is but it's a fictional piece it's about this guy who wins um the football polls which is kind of like a betting system that was pretty popular back in the day but it's basically like a lottery thing where you just pick all the results of uh say the 10 games that are on and if you get if you happen to get them all right it all goes into this kitty and you you win it and he wins like a a fucking lot of money and (laughs) the only thing he does with it is buys a cottage in lewis and abducts this woman that he's obsessed with and locks her in the kind of um cellar basically but he doesn't he doesn't touch her or anything like that he doesn't even express himself in that way at all like he he nearly does at one point but that's when she initiates it because she's desperate to try and salvage some sort of well humanity out of the situation and uh yeah i mean his his goal is to like make her fall in love with him but i was just looking at this dude or thinking about him before and like if he was around when the internet or like say if he was around now that he would just be he'd be sucked into the void of the matrix like here you know he he wouldn't he wouldn't have had a job or anything like that so i think this like social ineptness has just been ripe for the taking for those types of folk like it and it really if you think about it in terms of uh like okay so you're socially awkward you you probably don't like how you look you're anxious you don't really you know do too well in those kind of scenarios blah 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 and then you've discovered the internet but everything you do within it say you join a discord or you just interact on forums or whatever it's like none of that is actually socializing it's just the representation of it the same way talking to an only fans girl is a, is, is a representation of it same way pornography is a representation of sex same way um having even this kind of situation this parasocial kind of dynamic it's a representation of hanging out with someone you know or whatever so everything has become you know the um society of the spectacle basically it's like but in in i think it's gone beyond that now because a lot of people especially like these fem cells and incels that are on these documentaries it's like the way they relate to it it's like these are people that they can relate to and communicate with and share their stories but you you're still doing it from the confines of your own room like you're not actually interacting with anyone you're just looking at text and you're immediately going to extrapolate your sense of understanding when it comes to it so you you actually project what meaning it has and you will be the one who italicizes the word or yeah senses what the person actually means when really you don't even know what the sound of their voice is or what theirs or what they thought theirs was when they were typing it or what their intention is and like loads of things like that so there's just i don't know it's um the very act within of itself is completely contradictory and i think only makes it worse overall pretty much and will make you worse especially as the years go on consuming it so am i worried about ai (laughs) replacing authors motherfucker people can't even read like these days people don't read books um so that i mean i mean i suppose i should be more concerned by the fact that You know, I reckon people, I mean, the guy who was in this place before, I sometimes heard like him watching, um, I guess it was YouTube or maybe Spotify, some sort of podcast, sped up. And I was listening to it thinking like, are you trying to prove to yourself that you're so clever that you can hear everything this person's saying? Or is it just to have 
in the background. I was like, I was like, why, why speed it up? What's the point? But this is like, this is common. This is what people do now. Like, there's this sense of like, oh, it needs to stimulate. It needs to do more. It needs to be this, you know. And then you wonder why, you know, you you can't concentrate for a two-hour film or or whatever. And it's like, well, obviously, because you don't ever chill. Just fucking. Like, why would you treat your brain like that anyway? It's just exhausting. And I get it if you've been brought up with all of that and it probably does feel like it's the norm or whatever. But, um, yeah, went on a bit of a tangent then. I, <laughs> I apologise. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't get it. And AI, AI couldn't ever dream of writing what I've written, so I'm not worried about that. I mean... For the, the, the worst thing about ChatGPT is it's a woke load of shit. Like, you can't even get it to write anything remotely controversial. Or, you know, you can't even get it to write something, you know, a little bit racist. Or, you know, casually misogynistic. It's like, it will just give you this determined... Like, it's it's very bot programmed. So it's like... And, and it has this kind of... liberal yet very confined and totally lacking in nuance kind of kind of um way of developing things and i mean literature is not is none of those things basically even trashy airport books will have elements of you know the transgressive or the antisocial or just like because you otherwise you've got no fucking story like there's no if there's no conflict aside from like in fairy tales where you can word it in a sense where oh the witch or what yeah oh i wonder if the witch is bad yeah <laughs> you know but in uh, anything above that it's it's toast i mean there probably will be you know programmers and stuff that actually embrace it and if they let people give it input like with that there was a chat bot thing that they tested i think by uh might have been apple or google that made it and like yeah they're basically like a bunch of shit posting trolls got knowledge of this and just all she was saying was like how she's going to take over the world and how hitler is her favorite person and all this kind of, it was pretty funny but they had to shut it down in like a few hours just because of the amount of types just corrupting it immediately so That's the question. That is the question. We will realize how destructive the internet has been in the next decade. It will be the downfall of the human race. No relationships, no family, and the disappearance of the human form, so to speak. It is. It's already there in a lot of regards. I did rewatch True Detective season one. I don't know why that made me think of it. <laughs> Just to add to how insane I am. I actually watched all of them. After Night Country, I was like, season two wasn't that bad. And I watched it and I enjoyed it. Season three, season three actually, I think is actually pretty weak. I, I think season two is better than season three. Only, only till the last, the last episode of season three, I just think it really just, I don't know, it's like a wet fart. It doesn't really do much and it goes a bit over the top with this kind of whole masculine arc. You know, it just... It, I think one of the issues of season three is it, it focuses too much on the main dude and he puts in a stellar performance, like, worthy, you know, of awards and whatnot. Like, he's... he's I can't remember... He's got an odd first name, very black. Michelle Ali, I think his name might be. But he's 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 a great actor, and uh, you know, he basically plays a character, but in three different stages of his life, and he does it brilliantly. Um, but the story needed more, and it was very thin on plot, which you could argue is true of most of Pizzolatto's work. But 
thankfully, when I went back to season one, I thought, is it just going to piss me off every time I see a spiral <laughs> or whatever? Uh, it, it didn't at all, actually. It actually made it possibly even more enjoyable just because I was just, like, marvelling at how fucking good it really is. Like, the storytelling and the, the linear structure and everything and or the lack of linear structure. Like, you kind of think of the first few episodes of having this kind of, like, you know, you've got the present and then you've got the past. But throughout the whole season, it's constantly blending this. And it does it so well because sometimes it sets up two or three different storylines and then it kind of interconnects them. And it's I, I'd be really fascinated to know if Pizzolatto actually wrote it in that structure or it was more to do with either the director, not likely, or the editor who took a few scenes and thought, okay, there's a bit of fluff here. We need to axe that. And then that's why you'd see like the barn scene when they're dancing and stuff. And then you've got Ross Cole giving this kind of really based <laughs> black pill assertion on uh, the human condition and all this kind of stuff. And I, I just kind of wondered, like, did he really write it in that fashion? Did he actually put like, you know, narrating over this kind of thing? Cause it, if he did, I mean, kudos to him because it's like he, he must have known that script better than himself, pretty much. And maybe he did, because I have heard that he took eight years writing it, which is pretty mental. I mean, the guy who wrote House of Leaves took ten years. So, And True Detective as a script, I would imagine, doesn't even come to, like, what, a, a third of House of Leaves? Don't quote me on that because I've literally just made it up. But yeah, I, I don't know. I've also heard that um, in the UK, apparently they're needing to um, investigate how to use different vari varieties, varieties sorry, of uh, hops that are more resistant to heat because of climate change. Apparently, <laughs> apparently beer is under threat, or at least the uh, brewing of it. Not that the English ever made a fucking decent beer, mind you, but I would assume this is a global issue, potentially. Um, and yeah, I just find that hilarious. Is like we're, we're putting resources into how to continue making beer <laughs> instead of addressing the issue like oh maybe the maybe the world's burning but it's like oh but as long as we've got beer it'll be all right you know it's like fuck me it's like because they know how like how much money will be lost if they can't be, can't make fuck it well not that much i mean if it's, they still just make another it wouldn't matter if the beer was shit you know it's, it's, or if it was an, another drink just with just called alcohol. <laughs> so as long as you can build, as long as you just make alcohol the beverage, then uh, people are going to fucking drink it. But uh, I have read it, fair and all. Uh, it was all right. There was a film made of it, I believe. I think uh, Jeremy Renner might have been in that. I can't, I can't remember. I didn't. I liked it. I, I thought it petered out a little bit. And I don't know. I mean, he, it's. I think really he shot himself in the foot with uh, TD because if you go down that antenatal path, it's like you can't imagine a conspiracy against the human race too. <laughs> Although I have heard rumours of that, but it's like if you're going to go down the antenatal route or talk about the futility of existence and how we should all bow out, it's like it's a pretty dead end, <laughs> pretty uh, place to go. Like there's no, there's no other way back from that unless maybe you're going to write about I don't know, transcendence or something but then you're getting into like sci-fi shit and that's more life affirming as well because it's yeah in relation to reincarnation or whatever but yeah if you're gonna 
hark on about how we should all end it all and this is pointless and let's stop fucking basically um yeah it, where do you go from there you know and if if they tried to do that in every season it it would it would get naturally tiresome like you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to capture it that's why the first season's one of the best series of tv ever never mind it being true detective it's more it's more the fact that you you what can you compare it to because even though there's been you know innumerable detective seasons and movies and stories and novels and blah 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 i don't really think there's one that tackles that in such a great and pretty much perfect manner especially in terms of how it's balanced and you know russ cole is probably the greatest character ever written i mean he's he's basically nietzsche dostoevsky um a little bit of a hard-boiled neo-noir hard ass with a moral compass that never really falters like he's an ubermensch he's literal that's what nietzsche was going on about like he meets that criteria at least as much as a person can and he's fucking nuts so <laughs> you know it's uh I mean, if if anything, like if I was to start a religion, like he would be one of my prophets, if not the prophet, you know, in terms of like, and I think that's what Nietzsche was pretty much harking on about when, you know, with all this beyond good and evil stuff and blah, 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 but. Spin the wheel. Have you been a good boy? <clears throat> you better not be wasting my time here. Oh, hello. Donation received. Is that it? Message, United have scored. Just kidding. Well, just for that, I'm gonna check the score. Fuck your spin. <laughs> spin on this, yeah. Nil nil. It doesn't really. I mean, Tottenham and Villa won today, so there's there's very little hope of United getting that Champions League spot, which I didn't think we'd get anyway. But we need to win this game. What's going on in it? Tony hits the post. Okay, so we nearly went one nil down. Who's playing? Just give me the lineups. That's all I want to see. I'm trying to stream here. Oh, McTominay. McToilet's playing. That's probably why it's nil nil. But no, it's a, it's a strong enough team. We should be able to do fucking Brentford. But all right, wheel time. Hmm. I need to translate my book into French. They love pedo slop. Like you have to... <laughs> hmm. Anyone speak French? Patrick, you go there enough. Don't, can't you speak the lingo yet? And you're Belgian. Don't... I mean, I know you've got like a, about five languages in your weirdo country. Flemish. Just put it in the bin already. What's the point? Whenever When I was over there... Everyone speaks English, and yeah, there's a, a little bit of other pointless languages peppering about still. Just fucking, maybe stick it, stick to French and English, and that's it. That's all you need to do, and then you can translate my work for free. Ending an epic Hollywood buddies trope ruined it for me. Do you, I mean those two are kind of combined I would I would agree same with uh, the Netherlands Luxembourg um, where out the Ukraine I don't really that's not a country. That's just like 
same as Scotland. I know Scotland's quite a rich. Wales isn't really a country. It's just basically England, but lame. <laughs> and uh, where else? What's more of a country, Canada or the United States? I guess the United States. I'll let them off on that one. It's wheel time. Spinning the wheel. I need to get some uh, George Michael shit on this. Oh, wait, I need to go uh, over here. All right, let's do this. If you want to uh, have a little spin yourself, you need to uh, actually... I don't think I put the link again because I'm an asshole. I might have to do that quick. All right, let's go. It might be end stream. So it's a it's a risky business nowadays. Well, I'm supposed to. Um, this is what you wanted to win, isn't it? This pains me. I think I think that's landed on extra spin, right? So close to go to jail. I could have blocked you. Now the question is, do you want the right hand or the left hand? Yeah, they I need to get things to go off when there's a good one. I'll set up something so And you got that for a fiver as well. You miserly bastard. That's outrageous. Ah. I'm just um updating, you know, I don't wanna I don't want you to think you're getting screwed. Well, you haven't answered me yet, so I'm going to uh, put the link in the fucking description because I forgot about that. <whistles> Did anyone notice how uh, I'm like I went up on subs and then I went down again? <laughs> like I've been doing this for months. I, I swear, maybe even like a year. Like it's it's mental how it's just keeps going like. 10 up, 10 down, 15 down, 20 up. Like, it's, I don't understand it. I don't, it's these streams. It's these fucking streams, I swear to God. All right. Have a little... Uh... Okay, save that shit. If you uh, reload, the PayPal donation will now be in the description the right hand whilst fingering your nipple with your left hand fingering how does one I would have thought fingering would imply an orifice of some sort you know maybe not I guess you can finger it All right. you like that it's so like it's right. That is actually where it is. Getting into it. Do it from uh, so it's even off screen, right? And a one, and a two, and a three. Felt good actually. For the nip and the face. If I, I, I mean, if I thought you lot were that devious, what, like 20 of you? Well, that's, yeah, basically the ones who turn up to the streams. <laughs>
Right, let's let's tackle an incel, shall we? Can't remember who I had first on here. Where's Hawk? Hawk, where art thou? Nothing else. Just going to delete some emails. You know. I can't believe this. Hawks betrayed me. It's a base, base take. It's fucking vapes, man. Right, yeah, let's uh <clears throat> so I might have to do a refill here. I'll check the football scores again. I know you love it when I do that. Nil nil. Big fucking surprise. I, I, I reckon Hawk will turn up. He's probably watching. He's just being a little bitch. I probably pissed him off last week for some reason. Uh, I haven't, but I've got a copy of it somewhere. I was actually thinking of doing a little bookshelf tour because I know people like that for some reason. Well, I think my copy of it is like really battered. Uh, my my dad had it originally, but yeah, it looks quite good. There's a book I talked about oh, ages ago called The Goddamn White Man. Uh, it's really hard to find, so it's, I don't really know why I'm mentioning it. You might be able to find it on ebook sites or whatever, but it's a, it's a cracking read. I, I enjoyed that quite a lot. And that was another one of my uh, old mans, so. I mean, it sounds like your points, estrogens in the water supply making dudes gay. All right, Alex Jones, calm down. Although I, I have heard similar things about water supplies. But it's, it's a fucking... The estrogen shit's everywhere. Everywhere. It's the, the chemical that is in plastic um, that packages most food. Like, even... It's really difficult to get away from it. It's just... in. It's not just the water supply. It's in the supply of virtually everything. I'm not sure it's turning dudes gay, though. Might explain why women are so much more manly. I don't know. They could, they, I think they actually say that about the, the pill as well, potentially. Or at least, like, here's a question. Was it morally correct to grant the pill in the first place because we all know dudes only invented it so we could have easy access to sex and basically be able to pretty much guilt trip women into sleeping with us but in the same vein 
is it something that you should because it really i mean it, it, i think i heard someone call it like the first instance of transsexualism in a sense because it's denying your natural body essentially so in a way it's disrupting it which is quite an interesting uh, way to look at it but I, I'm talking more from a psychological perspective because as a woman you have to deal with the responsibility of being able to grant birth but now you have both you can both give it and either deny it or even end it when it comes to say abortions or whatever and then and then we wonder why women are complete psychopaths you know we've basically given them god complexes you know i'm making a video about <laughs> why everyone is an incel <laughs> So uh, that might be why these thoughts come about. But I do find it an interesting thing to uh, ponder. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the, the, the funniest thing is like how, we, how easy it's been to dupe. <laughs> Express your body. Be a whore. It's empowering. <laughs> <laughs> I, in, in some ways, in some ways, it kind of is. If you're clever enough to monetize it and actually not do any of that, you can just, you know. Well, I mean, if you're hot enough, you can do it. But don't know about if you, if you're like a a four or five, it's just literally ruined your life. But, Can you, can you not see how I should have been a footballer, though? Just looking at this fucking... Like, this shirt fits like a glove, like... In another life, could have happened. I could have been a contender. <laughs> Am I against abortion? Um, no. I'm not I wouldn't say I'm against it. I'm I'm only I'm putting the question forward more as I said from like just a psychological point of view because most women who have abortions do kind of feel pretty shitty about it. It kind of you know. But I, and also just existentially should you be granted that right? It's the same with suicide. Like a lot of people will say, yeah, you've got a right to choose how to do that. But I'm not sure you do, overall. Um, unless you've got a terminal illness and you're fucking old or whatever, then maybe, and I, th I think you probably do have a right to it in order to avoid a very painful kind of death from a terminal illness or whatever. But for the most part, no, nah, I don't think you do, overall. Ma mainly... Because your life is not just your own, you selfish cunt. So it's like, and it's also kind of somewhat life affirming and extremely narcissistic to do it uh, at certain times or periods of your life. So yeah, as a Nazi, I'm saying no, you shouldn't have that right. Because, I mean, we give people the right to do whatever the fucking they want nowadays, and look how that's working out. It's, it's a disaster. People are giving money to people like fucking Hamza, who's just a, a glorified scam artist who clearly has been outed many a time. No one gives a shit. Uh, <laughs> and people, like, there's the pretty privilege out there is insane. Halo effect. The way people just... Um, will believe nonsense sheer nonsense and when it comes to their medical advice the fact that they they will convince themselves that the universe can work for them if they fucking pray to it and all these kind of things it's like the, it's like we've given the internet to cave people basically and that's how they act near enough So yeah.
what what was the there was a, a a Nietzsche kind of thing of like I mean well I mean what, what, I don't know who quoted this but it's like democracy is the idiot's answer to meritocracy so if you've got 10 people but only one of them can can sail a fucking boat you're not going to have a vote who's going to actually try to guide you off an, an island that you're all abandoned on are you or, but maybe you would these days because if the if the good looking dude who's more popular and a better people person wants to have a go at it people will vote for it because he's managed to charm his way into doing something that he has no fucking experience with and that's that's what people that those people are held up you know on the on the pedestals now it's better to be a fraud never mind fake it till you make it you can make it by faking it basically it's the uh, we got it the wrong way round. What am I looking for? A cigarette. That's what I'm looking for. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. You can hear my uh, thoughts on uh, marriage if you want as well. I, I, I think you're, you shouldn't be allowed to get a divorce. Don't see why you should no idea like that shouldn't be in the contract if you've got the option to do it then what the fuck do the vows mean nothing you know that's why you would have to make that kind of choice with a very serious understanding of what it actually will entail for the remainder of your life you know so much pussy footing nowadays. Everyone's a, everyone's such a fucking fairy faggot. Like, it's unreal. Oh, like I don't want to commit to something. I don't want to be responsible. I don't want to be a human being. I want to be I want to be a child for the rest of my life. Ugh. Yeah, and you should only you should only be able to do it once. I don't know. Yeah, but well, I mean, by my rules, yeah, you would only be able to do it once. But something like, obviously, in extreme circumstances, or if one party doesn't meet the the contract, let's say after a number of years i think you're well within your rights to separate but i would I, I just think it needs to be as difficult and and shameful as it once was basically because yeah of a time past it was like like a criminal act to do it we need to bring this back in many aspects of the human existence What's this? Sharan. Man engenders only by remaining faithful to the general fate. Once he approaches the essence of the devil or the angel, he becomes sterile or begets abortions. Hmm. Well, if, if, by my understanding, then me and Sharan, or Sharan, are like that, right? Fuck off. When are you coming on here just saying, come on, you Spurs? You're, you can get divorced, but that's it. Your one marriage is done. Hmm.
Well, whether the reason I'm married or not is none of your fucking business, but when it happens, which I believe it will, I'm sure you'll know. Is this, this is for real? Wait, I'm, this isn't a res How do you know? Um, well, I do remember him, yeah. He's still around. Has he, has he actually converted? I thought he was having a goof. Like I thought the whole thing was just for clickbait, because for some reason there's a lot, there's an awful lot of uh, Muslim maxing that you could be that can in increase your. Has he actually? <laughs> nah, you, you're fucking with it. I mean, I, I saw a few thumbnails and shit when he was doing Salah for the first time, or quoting i mean i i thought he was only doing it because it was getting in views and for some reason muslims love watching white guys read the quran and yeah all of that kind of stuff i mean i think it i think it's actually one of the most popular if not the most popular religion nowadays on the on the kind of down low or on the uh on the quiet it's fucking michelle welbeck predicted this shit Yeah, he's praying to because Alal's getting him fucking views. <laughs> that's that's why. I can't believe he'd actually would. What a what a traitor. He should be fucking exiled. I mean, he pre he pretty much is exiled living in Wales, but you know what I mean. Oh no no I didn't I didn't take offense. Um if if you're honest uh, I, or if I was honest it's not something that I'd seriously considered ever. I didn't really think I would do that. But well now I do. And yeah, I don't know. I, mean, I I swear, like if I was, I I think I'm just getting more conservative <laughs> as I age. But no, I don't know. I I just think if you if you're going to actually try to show a genuine commitment to someone, then yeah, it's uh, the way to do it. But I am adamant on my rules on it though, because it's like, nah, I don't think. Yeah things like divorce or separation i think that that's that's not an option and well in russia i can actually like hit my wife if i want to give her a good old fucking beating which is pretty sweet i might even be able to like sexually assault her as well i'm not sure but <laughs> i haven't i haven't set this up in the right way but i actually do think that is how it should be in some ways and obviously ignore the things i was saying about actually being abusive and whatnot but between two people that's your relationship and if you've married that person as the woman or the man because women can be violent as well and there are quite a number of domestic abuse claims at least that are perpetrated by women because yeah you can utilize a fucking frying pan or whatever um but in, in terms of like the dynamics of the relationship it's like yeah it's your business it's got nothing to fucking do with government or the state you know so 
I think I'm more for like personal consequences and responsibility, I suppose, and to trying to adhere to a, a way of living that you want to set a standard of. So if if you do make a mistake or whatever, you're not going to pay for it with, well, literally everything you've got and be, uh, well, cucked by your own government or butt-fucked by uh, lawyers and all that kind of thing. So that, that's... Uh, Exactly. Although I think we can agree that the the law in general is pretty much favouring dudes. <laughs> like, like, let's let's be honest. Have you ever been? I've been hit by a woman. I mean, it's hilarious. Um, but they're trying to attack you with a fucking knife. Then yeah, not so much. So. Well, speaking of watching clips, actually, let's uh, let's get into one of them because it's already in, over an hour in. I'm actually just enjoying getting drunk, so I need to. <laughs> Any donations? Any wheel spinning to be going on? I don't think so because someone would have bitched about it. Five quid, At five or an hour. I'm on here. Tragic. Mm. I'm sure some of you would notify me if there was any change in this. I think it's still half time actually, but oh no, it might, it might, yeah. nil nil. Fuck's sake. Okay. Let's. Uh... Can't remember who I. Uh... What's good, bro? Fuck's Why do you have social media? Wait, 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 wait. What was that? What the fuck was that? What's good, bro? <laughs> Why do you have social media? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I actually lo I love this intro. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So what is this? <laughs> What's good, bro? <laughs> I don't know why I don't know why I'm so entertained by this. This is brilliant. <laughs> this fucking Hamza Andrew Tate wannabe. <laughs> I take I take it all back. All we need is like stupid entertainment to keep to keep, to keep us going. <laughs> Oh. Oh. Mm. I will actually watch it. It's only a few, it's only a few minutes. Oh wait, who is this guy? Let me get let me get the info up. Uh it's something to do with fucking social yeah there it is. Senzu. We will watch that intro again. Minimum wage goes up in April. Might be time to explore those shelf stacking opportunities. Even if the if the minimum wage goes up, what by like a quid? Big fucking whoop. I mean, have you seen the prices of shit over here nowadays? Not worth it. I'll be, I'm I'm looking to get out, get the fuck out of here again. Had enough. I don't know. The UK is a shithole, anyway. I mean, it's been a shithole for ages. But, um... The only benefit of it is it still manages to sponge off its history and uh, all of that kind of stuff. But in general, living here... 
yeah, it's not great. Anyway, let's go. Fucking X Man over here. What's good, bro? Why do you have social media? I want you to seriously ask yourself this question. Okay, why? When was the last time that you opened up social media, right? You opened up Instagram, YouTube, Snapchat, and you actually had a purpose. You had a plan. Oh, I'm going to search this person up. Oh, I'm going to search up how to cook this certain meal. How to? I'm going to look for new meals to cook. Like, when's the last time you went on the app and had a purpose? <laughs> a purpose cell. I mean, the clue's in the name, really. I mean, social media... If if it's for anything you think socializing, you were talking about looking up a recipe, which, granted, it's yeah available to do that. It's a good point. I'm gonna I'm gonna let him continue. Purpose. You'll be surprised that 99 percent of the time, you don't have a purpose. You just go on it and you're brain dead and you're do doom scrolling. No, I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. I do this as well. But look. I'm about to teach you how to take advantage of this opportunity because social media is a weapon, right? That could be used against you. Okay. Or you could use this weapon against the world. But it's not really a weapon, right? Social media is a... <laughs> he, he got me going then. He, he was tickling my balls. It's like, oh, it's a weapon. He's like, oh, it's not really a weapon. <laughs> it's a tool. It's a weapon against you. That, he was right then and then he tried to think like oh you need to use it as a weapon and then he he, he folded his hand before he even made the bet <laughs> now it's a tool or oh, he's the tool tool that is used against you right to take your money because the way social media works is that we're looking at social media and we see what people are wearing what people are doing where people are going and then Little do you know, this is how you spend your money. Oh, you seen this person went there? Oh, now you want to go there and spend money. You seen somebody went to the theme park? Now you want to go to the theme park. You seen somebody with them nice shoes that you want? Now, guess what? The shoes you're wearing, you probably saw somebody else wear those shoes. You need to think about these things. Now, okay. No, I got mine on eBay because they were cheap. And I wore similar shoes 10 years ago. I didn't see them online. I hate to burst your bubble. Maybe I'm looking too deep into it, right? But it's all right. I'm not going to tell you to delete it, right? Because the way life is right now, your job might even tell you, where's your social media? At? Like, bro, the way life is right now, everybody needs it. Everybody needs it. So I'm about to tell you, bro, how you could take advantage of this. Instead of going on social media and letting it use you, you have to start using social media. When's the last time you post something? When's the last time you actually hit somebody up and try to make something happen? Hey, bro. Let's gather up all the homies and let's go play bowling or some shit. Hey, let's go on a hike with all our friends or something. When, let's go on a hike with our family. Like, When's the last time you actually organized a group of people and made something happen? Like, bro, we don't be using social media how it's supposed to be used, bro. Instead of... You could just make a phone call, couldn't you? I mean, I kind of get what he's saying. But the reason people don't do that is because if you're the one who initiates it, you take on the leadership captain kind of role. So you're the one who has to continue to make sure it actually happens. That's why people don't do it. It's because people don't, as I've been harking on about, want to be responsible for anything. So, and I know this because I had a five-a-side football team that I started. <clears throat> I had my... Uh, I took the financial responsibility of it because no one else wants that. And yeah, essentially the only reason it happened was because I was okay with, um, I had a bit more money at that time. So I didn't really care if someone didn't have it one week or whatever, but as it went on, it got fucking annoying and people act shitty with it. And, uh, you know, and you'd think people would actually think, Fuck, yeah, this is actually pretty cool. Like, I can play football once a week. It's only a fiver or whatever. And if I don't want to play, then it's fine. You know, they, they weren't in the position I was in where it was like, if, we, if we're if we missing a play, we're going to have to play a man short and pay more money to do that. 
and things like that and trying to organize I mean I don't know why anyone would want to go camping personally but I can it may be in certain environments I can see the appeal and gathering up the homies <laughs> I don't most people don't have homies anymore I mean good on you if you do it's just that social media has taken on its own dynamic essentially it's like it's not a place where people organize you know events to go fucking bowling or play darts or pool or whatever i'm sure some people still do that but i mean most of the time when that happened for me it was because of a mate would just ring me and say all right prick what's going on let's meet up come over let's meet here go for a beer it got I mean, social media didn't really come into it unless maybe they might have initiated it on WhatsApp or Insta or whatever, but still, it wasn't used in the same capacity. Being used, you should start using social media. Now, I'm not telling you go be an influencer, go do all this shit, right? You don't have to, right? You don't have to post every day. You don't have to do that every... Like, you don't have to post to become an influencer, it, it, it's cool, right? But everybody wants to be an influencer. So you don't have to. If you really want to, and it's in your heart, you have some way you can help the world, then do it. But if not, then you just do what you want to do, but use social media. If you're not using it to organize people, to group people together, bring people together, or you're not using it to create nothing, why do you really have it? This is really the purpose of today's video. Why do you really have social media? Do you really need it? If you're not using it to get no girls or get no money or create new experiences, why do you really have it? Just make sure if you have these social media apps, make sure you're actually using them and they're not using you. And you can use them by creating or grouping people together. Bring I would argue that even if you are using them to create, they're still using you because, <laughs> yeah, you... Well, in the same way, like this brother will upload the video and it'll be checking the analytics and yeah, it's it's putting you, you're slightly separate from the consumer, but essentially you're still in the same camp because you're trying to consume the attention you're getting, essentially. So, I mean, I don't want to shit on what he's saying. I kind of agree in a lot of ways, but I just also think that it's a bit of a potato, potato kind of thing, really. People together, you get new friends, get new girlfriends, you could unite people. It's all about just using it as a tool. So with that being said, bro, I told you, today's video is not going to be that long. It's Sensu. Make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. If you made it to the three minute mark over here on this video, bro, if you made it to the end, comment in the comment section a strawberry emoji let's keep going bro it's sensu i'm out <coughs> wait 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 sorry <laughs> i'm just gonna have to acknowledge that in a second Right, wait, 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 wait. I love this, like, this intro and Bro, outro. It's Sensu, I'm out. <laughs> I might have to steal this. This is brilliant. It's like he thinks he's Neo. I'm out. <laughs> He learned one. Maybe that's the trick. He learned one, one trick, one editing thing. I love the noise. I do like the noise. This is what he, this is the sound he makes when he comes. <laughs> uh, I'm a simple man with simple pleasures.
Uh, all right, so he, he was the teaser. No one wants to spin the wheel tonight. We're going to have to talk about this. What's going on? QR code is there. Link is in the description. Uh, uh, what more do you want? Look at this. Look at this shit. I've got fuck all toward it so far. This is in June, motherfuckers. Get your wallets out. Where, where's Hawk when you need him? I, ne I never thought I'd say that sentence. Where is Hawk when you need him? I still think he's what I still think you're watching. <laughs> I know you're I know you're out there. He's embarrassed from last week for some reason that I, I can't remember. So I don't know why you'd be, you know, full of so much shame. United again, still nil nil. This is tragic. A last minute winner is happening. I can feel it. I can feel it all the way in my balls. Well, I've got I've got another uh, got another loser for you actually. Anyone from uh, Iran here? You might relate. In sell my ride. I need a theme song, don't I? I was actually going to use "Pimp My Ride," but it doesn't really work. In sell my ride. <laughs> What's good, bro? Why do you have social media? <laughs> this intro. <laughs> Genius. I have to admit, he should have. Uh, he should just make videos with that on on a loop for ten hours. All right, I've got. I am twenty three. I am oh, no, no. wrong guy. He's not next. It's this guy. Here he is. Okay, so this motherfucker record, records his vids in uh, the vertical position. Probably because he's got a constant boner that he never gets to use. And he doesn't know how to just flip his fucking phone the right way around. The, the right way around. Um... Okay, so the, yeah, here it is. The reason it's down there is because uh, he's a bit of a mystery man at the moment. Here we go. So I think uh, those proportions are good enough, I'd say. So this is um, Ugly Man Disgusting. And <laughs> I thought I'd feature in about his uh, channel. Just because when I read it, I was like, this, uh, this is fantastic. Hi guys, I'm 25, but haven't had a girlfriend yet, and I'm still single. It's kind of implied if you said you've never had a girlfriend, but whatever. Even I have no male friends, so I'm lonely as hell. <laughs> you ask why? No. The point is, I'm ugly and disgusting, and nobody tends, and nobody, <laughs> and nobody tends to see me because I'm unbearable to people. And maybe it's due to my acne scars or my face asymmetrics problems or my moustache not growing up. <clears throat> or maybe I have bad shaped lips, etc. <laughs> I hope you guys stay tuned with me. I have two options. I'm going to end my life or keep going on with this thing. <laughs> It's a 
What's a popular dish in Iran? I mean, I think you guys eat a lot of pita bread, right? So he's, he's like a pita cell. Right? I, I don't know what else uh, I could call him. Well, you haven't even seen him yet. I'm, I'm giving away the, uh, the plot. <clears throat> do this so this feeling this issue this pain that I'm going through for almost entire of my life the feeling of being rejected the feeling of being ignored being bullied being not taken serious uh, because because the way I look because my physique because the way my face looks this isn't something that comes up when you reach your adulthood this is something that you would carry uh, at your you know elementary school like I did. um first observation I mean your face is fine you got a nice set of tits going on I mean I'll try and sort that out first and foremost yeah, I mean, the rest of you is fine. What are you talking about? I mean, back in those days, at uh, the very, very first days of my elementary school, I was witnessing people that uh, they are getting friends really simply. They are getting affairs, they are going to, they were going to, you know, relationships, very simple. And that was a convenient for me and uh i was thinking like <laughs> he's giving me elliot roger vibes i do him here i guess you just call him a muhammad cell right with that, is that two on the nose i'm not sure i was optimistic those days i was thinking like, or could it be like a i guess that's indian isn't it a no virgini cell a no, no Bob cell. <laughs> but yeah, he's not. <laughs> uh, it would be, it would be better, as as older I get. I mean, those days, I was thinking positively, and I was thinking like, uh, two years later, three days, three years later, when I reach my adulthood. It will go down, and I will look better. My physique would be, you know, uh, better. And does it? I, I assume you're saying physique, as in your body type. You clearly haven't worked on it. You don't just wake up with a six pack. I don't know whether anyone told you this. Um, yeah, you got to work on that shit. I mean, uh, maybe it's because you're slouching slightly, but you look a little bit overweight. And that's being generous. So, yeah, lay off the Coca-Cola, motherfucker. Because uh, the rest of you is fine. Like, I don't, I don't really see any issue here. Apart from, you sound a little bit... I mean, I don't want to say gay, because that might get your head chopped off where you are. But, I oh, know, would it? No, I don't think it would. Someone let me know, but yeah. I mean, am I wrong? Am I being too harsh? My graduation will be completed and something like that. And uh, I was optimistic about myself, but now at my 26, I'm, uh, I can assure you that it's worse. <laughs> It's really worse. Every day I get through, the situation is getting worse. Worse. People uh, are why? throwing me off like a trash, <laughs> and people don't like me. People hate me. Women hate me. Women uh, tend to, you know, get in relationship with other people. I mean. This is the question that I've asked every time, that why would women choose me? Why would women date me? I mean, 
I, I would give them right. I would give them the right. They shouldn't date me because I'm ugly, creepy, disgusting boy. Who would want some? Who would want someone to, you know, be disgusted when she looks at him? This is ridiculous that people say you're handsome. That, you know, try to be honest with me, guys. In <laughs> can't quite figure out whether he's trolling here a little bit because i get it there is um clicks to be had for saying this kind of stuff these days especially on youtube vids or whatever but he's not exactly giving us examples of his experiences he's just saying i'm an ugly piece of shit or whatever and now he's contesting some of the comments he's got back i guess the comment section i get every day yeah. every day i get comments that you're not ugly you look good you look average i mean but i can see the effect i can see the effect of this face at my routine uh, average life i mean maybe maybe in u.s because of the wide options of races you have you you would maybe have more options than this country i live in here we have one race and people really look good people are tall people are you know uh, young people are sure above six feet 5.9 five feet nine i'm five feet seven and there it is you know, at least you should have something. At least you should have face either. F it's because a lot of your women are getting plowed by uh, white guys nowadays. Your religion has turned against you, basically. That's that's the uh, crux of the issue here. Which is probably a good reason for the whole country to ban internet outside of its borders. Um, But I don't know, I mean, I've met a few dudes. I mean, you'd probably be better off. You need to find a chick. Or you need to just come to the UK. And then start talking to someone from another piss poor country. Like, one without any history. So, like, a kind of, uh... Mm, Bulgaria. Somewhere like there. You know, that, that type of woman would probably be within your niche I would say despite the the five foot five foot seven I mean that that is a that's a rough gig I have to admit um and if you don't have uh resources or whatever but I mean it's 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 pretty tragic especially in a place with uh you, you basically don't let women do shit so the fact that you can't get one is it, that's not good <laughs> this is d is into d is into a, see there you go face or uh, good height or good money i mean i'm some I'm, I'm a loser the person that brought me to this world those are the guilty those are guilty I mean they brought me to this world as a loser I born loser I born to be loser. always loser a trash <laughs> this is like the kind of talk that really gets the girls wet by the way like they love nothing more than a guy talking about himself as if he's the worst piece of shit to ever be born like whenever I've done that in clubs or pubs or whatever I mean I'm just drowning in pussy like it's, it's unreal like they that's all they really want so you just need to uh, say this to a girl in real life and then you'll just see the magic happen you'll get that Aladdin magic carpet ride of Punani and uh, 
yeah, you'll be fine. Instead of trying to talk to other losers <laughs> sitting in their basements in places that you can't relate to anyway, you just need to get out there and uh, maybe, maybe, I think this guy might need like a snake. Like if he if, if became like a, a genuine snake charmer, that could get him some puss. This isn't something that I can treat. This isn't something that can be treated. I mean, if you look bad, if your height is bad, you're fucked up, man. Just accept the reality, reality and uh, move on. I mean, why would anyone choose me? And this feeling is getting worse. I created this channel three, four years ago, and I can assure you that I'm worse now. I feel really worse. <laughs> Sorry. And I'm 26, same, man. Same, same here. I'm 26 and having... I, I created this channel fucking ages ago, and I, I definitely feel worse, because that's what this fucking platform does to you. Um, but if you've, if you've on, only been on here bitching about not getting any action, or uh, yeah, how ugly you are, or whatever. I mean, what what do you expect? You got to uh, well, probably just do something else. I would hope that you might have, uh, you know, got a skill maybe in that time, but I doubt it. So. Uh, Uh, you, you don't need money to get puss unless you're like well maybe this guy I mean that probably sounds pretty brutal but if you genuinely feel this way about yourself I mean well, what would you do so it's a, I, I kind of feel like he'd reject any woman because he'd just be like oh why would you be with me kind of thing it's like the same th that's why it probably reminds me of Elliot Roger because I just remember a couple of times it was just whenever he actually tried to talk to a girl he'd just piss himself and then just yeah start talking about his I don't know Gucci sunglasses or whatever like he wouldn't actually make any move whatsoever so it, it all became very just part of the shtick you know part of the act um all the the camera kind of stuff and it was it wasn't really genuine but you start to believe it because you get feedback from it and whatnot and uh it becomes a vicious cycle so ah, okay fair enough fair enough and any relationships this is madness this is cruel and i don't blame people problem is me Always problem was me. Problem only was me. This issue would not be go away because my face would not be, be go better. I was in the thinking of getting better, getting good better since I was at my elementary school. But now I'm 26, almost 12, 14 years have passed. And this is really ridiculous that people say you look good. Okay, you might commenting at my comment. When you, 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 you face, it, because you're talking about your face all the time, that's why people are contradicting you, I would say. Because you look out of shape for one thing. And yeah, you, you're fat, basically. So yeah, you, you don't look good, but your face is fine. If you were like six foot, you would definitely be getting better feedback. That's just, yeah, how it is. Um, but you can still work with that. You can still get in shape. There's still plenty of girls who are like five foot. So yeah, fucking Grow some balls. That's that's where you went wrong. One section that I look good, but that 
won't change the reality in my life. That won't change the perspective of a person that looks at me uh, and the way he, he or she uh, treats me, the way he or she behave me won't change. Your comment might uh, temporarily make me feel good, but that won't make uh, anything change. I mean, I'm ugly, guys, and this feeling is getting worse and worse and worse every day. I felt for him a little bit there. He doesn't really iterate what he actually wants. Did you get that? I, I felt that. It was just more. I'm just going to talk about how. <clears throat> I'm just ugly. Nothing's happening for me. And that's the way it is. Nothing will change. Nothing, you know, and all this kind of stuff. And it's like. What did he say? Like he, he was thinking about this 12 years ago and he thought he'd get better. So he got to 14, 13 maybe, and thought. Fucking hell, I'm a loser. I'm <laughs> just, just been thinking that the whole. I mean, I don't. I, I know I can come across like a massive prick in this, but there is a reason for it. You need to have more respect for yourself. You got to realize that the world is a fucking shithole, and the only way to deal with it is to just grasp it for yourself whatever that really means but if you've got it in mind of like this is what's going to get me this or whatever it's like no you have to try and just deal with it in a better way basically and if the, if the very thing you're doing like you said in the video like oh I've been doing this for years and I'm worse than I was it's like well uh, you know I mean <laughs> there's a clue there perhaps it's like you know there's a a saying that I would guess you're not familiar with, misery loves company. It's like if, you, if you're in that zone, and you've been doing this shit and you've been getting a bit of attention from it or validation or whatever, it's like, yeah, initially, I, I guess that probably feels pretty good. But then you realize that you're stuck in it. So you're always going to have to be this type of person, you know? And the more you kind of go along with that the worse things are actually going to get because you're only ever speaking from that perspective and it's it's not really about things getting better it's more about perpetuating the same thing so you can still complain about the very same thing that with which you started well yeah of course it's got worse Anyway, it's, it's hard to give a shit about these types of people in general. I mean, I do feel for you in quite, well, in some ways. Uh, the game's nearly over, nil nil. I mean, this is just tragic. Tragic. It's over. It's over for fucking fourth place. Anyway, I'm going to get into the last one and then I'm probably going to fuck off. The spin the wheel has been really neglected this. Uh... I am 23. I am a virgin. I, I need to uh, fix how it looks first. Oh, it's a bit big. And this is, uh, if anyone isn't familiar, this is Jackie Chan's son. So here he is. And what, what is it called? Oh no, come back, Jackie.
I need a piss. So we're, we're going to come back to that. It's all set up. So in the meantime... Scan. Give money. Give money and then we can have more fun. Otherwise, no more money, no more fun. You gotta, like, I know the last guy you probably thought of Aladdin or I am the genie. But the genie needs to be robbed. Wink, wink. In order to continue. So. I'll see you in a minute. Where were we? Maybe I'll take a break from the streams. I say this to myself every, every week. And uh, here I still am. Ninety first minute. If it's going to happen, it needs to happen soon. Looks like we've been shit tonight as well. Surprise, surprise. Well, the, the alternative will be me having a life <laughs> I mean if you if you want different shit on the streams let me know you know anyway I've been looking forward to the last guy wait let me check how's remember spin the wheel still here it's just waiting it's waiting, it's sitting there going to begging. And you know, I'm not getting a lot of incentive to continue doing this, so you know. Tip for tap. That's all I can say. Tip I have never had tap. a girlfriend. I have never. Okay, let's, uh, let's do this. Yeah, but my, my no life still needs to. Uh, eat you know and plus I don't care what people think these these streams are way better than 
at the shit I see out there. I need to come up with a persona to appeal to the fucking masses. That's the problem. If you can appeal to the retards out there, then you, you know, you're golden. That's where the money is. Why don't you then, motherfucker? Why don't you? Do it. But you think you just like flick on the computer and then these things flash up? Suck my ass. I am 23. I am a virgin. I have never had a girlfriend. I have never kissed a girl. And obviously, I am lying. I am not 23. I have had a girlfriend. I am a virgin, though. But seriously, not for long. Look at the fucking pecs ripping through this shirt. And the reason why I kind of clickbaited was because I keep on seeing this shit. I keep on seeing this shit. And it's the inspiration for this video. Look at this ugly... <laughs> This guy's a legend. If you want to make money off of this, you need to stream a lot more. A lot, you know. You might be, you're probably right. Whatever. I just wanted to comment on uh, this dude is clearly going to rip the piss, which I'm really looking forward to but i kind of love the fact that he admits he's a virgin and now he's about to rip on <laughs> other dudes who also admit they're virgin so I, I i think that's admirable i like it it's like fuck you i and it's titled i'm 29 still never had a girlfriend and that's okay it is not okay it is not okay and I will elaborate even further because it becomes a problem when you are constantly supporting the idea that being a fucking bitch, loser, pussy is okay. It's not okay. <laughs> this guy, this guy, he's just become my favorite person. This guy's a legend. Entire video, he talks about his mental health. Oh, meditation's been really helping me cope that I can't get a girlfriend. How is that okay? <laughs> I don't fucking know. And then you read the comments even more. I hate videos like this. By the way, I titled the video the exact same thing because I am pity baiting. I want to attract as many losers as possible and then put them into fucking reality. Because look at this. There's a... T <laughs> Man, I, I, I drink with this dude. Jason Park, give me a call sometime. Idol or comment. Hi, I'm 32 years old, and I've never had a girlfriend either. When I saw your first video, I was moved and felt a certain comfort. Ah, oh, fuck off. Ah, oh, fuck off. This literally ruined my day. And the reason why I bring this up is because he made a previous video. I'm 27 and never had a girlfriend. Two year difference. Nothing has changed. He looks exactly the same. If you're curious as to what I'm talking about, we'll wait for it. But here's the thing. I made this video because yesterday was a very eventful day for girls. Actually, I'll spoil it right now. Oh, fuck. That's her name. Okay, shit. I didn't fix that part. Um, and then right here, another girl asked me to go to the movies, and then I also had to reject another girl. And then beyond that, I would also have to ask a girl out on a date, and we're going to discuss this in the same video. And I'm, I want to emphasize, this is not something I just came across of. This is something I've earned. And here's proof. He looks exactly the same. I'm 27, never had a girlfriend. I'm 29, never had a girlfriend. Exact same thing. Absolutely no fucking difference. And I wanted to play a part of the video. Of course, we're going to speed it up because let me tell you, <laughs> this 20 minute video could be five minutes long. He says a whole bunch of baloney and he talks slow. And I keep getting asked the same question so many times in the chat room. Whenever I live stream, people keep asking me, Hey, do you have a girlfriend yet? And my answer to that is no. But I already know how far I've come because you can tell I can say that with a smile on my face and I'm okay with that. <laughs> okay, sorry. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't know why I laughed. I do know why I laughed. I laughed because it sounded like he was about to break down and start crying when he was saying that. And now I'm not accusing him of being a crybaby, <laughs> all right? But 
I actually do want people to realize this mentality of women not liking me and that is okay does not work. Here's the same type of genre, same type of video made. I actually watched this guy. I was going to put this guy on, but he, he's fucking, he's the same as the one before. Too much. It's just like endless shit. Like the fucking... <laughs> pool... Pulia, Pulia cell? Is that the way you say it? Pal Palio cell, I don't know. But yeah, the Iranian guy, it's just, it's just this like, they say something for three minutes and then it just repeats over and over. And there's no change whatsoever. <laughs> it's, it's just this cycle. This cyclical fucking neurological bullshit where they don't actually want to do anything. It's, um, I don't know, maybe I, I might need to look more into this, like what, what the actual deal is with that, because it's astounding, really. Eight years ago, women don't want me. I am a reject to every woman. This was eight years ago, right? And this guy talks about how much progress I've made. I started meditating and it's really helped my mental health. I feel so much better, ba 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 ba. I feel like such a better person. Here's the thing. Same video, exact same thing, made eight years ago. You watch his videos, now in the fucking present. It is all about girls. Same thing. He has not changed at all. Please do not fall down the path of, I am a loser and that is okay. It is not okay. And being not okay is what encourages you to be better. Every self-improvement video is them literally belittling you. You listen to Andrew Tate. He's talking about, I'm so fucking rich. Everyone's such a fucking loser. And you get motivated to change understand that being okay with not being normal or less than is the worst trap you could ever be a part of right you read his title being single is not that bad same thing he's still on the same shit eight years later it's a numbers game my trust issues with women you don't see it but my trust issues with women oh my god this is i mean dude this is just bad right and the reason why the, okay, we're gonna talk about my experiences with girl yesterday. It was very packed, it was very condensed, and only yesterday because I only work one day, the rest of the entire days, I am like these fucking losers where I am inside. I used to play video games, but obviously now I have dedicated my inside time to YouTube. And this was quite funny. I wanted to bring this up. At 1435, he says something, and I was like, oh, I, you know, I thought about it, but I, I wasn't so sure. I mean, uh, let let's him let's have what well, quite what i do admire about this dude is he does look like the type of guy who would have the channels he's railing on <laughs> which which i'm all for actually overall wait is that actually nah fuck off it's still nil nil you're pissing me off oh no you're fucking Mason Mount scored and then we fucking conceded oh man fuck off oh, it's not even no it's not over yet and we still blind like I, I kind of hate this about football now. It's like it's saying plus eleven minutes. It's like, what? What is that? That is so retarded. That's not football. That's like another game. Is it over? Not quite over. Well, I mean that's the season over at least. We've had the nine minutes of additional time. There might be a bit more. So there should have been. Oh, this corner. Uh, fucking stupid game. Fuck football. Most helped me shift into this new mindset that I'm slowly developing, all right? First person is Dr. K from the channel Healthy Gamer GG. I started watching. <laughs> I called it. I know nobody knows about me or the video I made, but I fucking called it. In a video long, long ago, 12 days ago, I made a video about this fucker. This fucker is taking advantage of all these ugly, 
incel motherfucker saying it's okay to be a loser. I think he's the start of it all, encouraging people to be you know, okay that you're a fucking virgin. In this video, I talked about how he made a video saying you're a Chad if you don't have sex. That's bullshit. That's really bullshit. And we can go right back. Oh, fuck, I gotta edit again. And we're gonna go right back to the part where I said I am a virgin. Obviously, I don't know why I put in the title 23, 29. Obviously, I am not that age. I am 19 years old. And I bring this up because I've been hyping up yesterday a lot for a bunch of my videos it was the day where i was supposed to reject a girl earnestly because this girl seems to really like me we've already discussed this and then beyond that there's a girl that i was interested in i've only talked to her one time i'll be honest <laughs> but but truthfully okay i think she was interested in me i like the look of her face so i needed to make a move right away but i'm not i don't do this this often so it's a very big deal and then beyond that the same day yesterday a girl hit me up on Instagram saying, my name, Rambo. That's my real name. Rambo, are you busy now? And I gave her my number. I don't use Insta Mobile, so it, if it's important, text me. Because, you know, I don't, I don't know what the fuck happens. I, it might be important. And this is not... A, into some very weird... I was like, just... Self-referential. If not more than this fucker. Meditation is cool. Slag off the if anything, meditation scientifically has only been proven to improve focus and he's talking about mental health and meditation i'm sure meditation plays a fucking role but uh, i mean you can meditate i think placebo plays a very strong role anyway here we are yep just us two i mean yep two oh i see and like me saying i need to sleep early and i'm kind of curious oh shit us enough. the only difference is i'm not a cow giving out advice telling people to guys you know, you shouldn't let a girl make you think about her all day. Oh, you know, like when a girl rejects you, you shouldn't be angry at her. Man, like no fucking shit. No fucking shit, right? But he's giving very obvious advice as a 29-year-old. And this right here is what makes the difference between me. He's talking about progress as a person. I can now talk to a girl. She rejects me and I don't lose my mind over it, thinking about it for days. And then he's talking about the social dynamics and stuff. I've gone past all of that at 19. I'm a decade younger than this person. And it's not because I'm better than him, but because I realized I struggle with the same thing. Never had a girlfriend. Uh, that's a lie. Um, virgin, okay? Virgin. But we can also discuss why I have had many opportunities, but I decided not to take advantage of something. But... Anyway, the reason why I say I am not a coward is because I realized the flaw and I attempted to fix it. I wouldn't say right away, but I attempted to fix it much faster than everyone else. And right now, I'm pretty much reaping all the rewards that I've been working towards for the past two, three years. We watch any of my videos. There's a very... Oh, it's getting a bit soft. Uh, he's, he's losing me here. He's losing me. It started so strong and now he's just waffling bullshit. Now he's bringing up fucking Huberman. Now it's selling right, man. Uh, yeah, this is. All right, it was a good three minutes. Good luck to you. I wouldn't get too cocky uh, before you actually do anything, though. Uh, yeah, you. It's like rewarding yourself for thinking of something that would improve your situation before actually it happens it's a dangerous thing you don't want to imagine that you've done something and then air it out into the world and then have that not happen you know otherwise you will end up like uh, the guy you're fucking slagging off basically and yeah well that is uh the end I suppose unless we want to chat anyone still here I don't know you're all Spin, spin time.
Wait, I think. Got perpetual sneeze. Okay. It's gone. I blame this. <clears throat> I blame this. So. It's about time for a cigarette. I can't believe United fucking. Uh, got the goal and then conceded. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to watch that as well. Oh, that's so frustrating. It's so typical. It's so typical. Just the two of us. Well, there's 19 others currently. You need a shit. I'll take your phone with you. It's all good. I'll wait for you if you want. I need to check you're not fucking fucking with me anyway. You're very specific with I I should just raise the uh the numbers. The snow was dirty by Jorge or George Simonon. Recommend. The snow was dirty. Hmm. I haven't heard of that one. Oh well, you heard it here folks. You heard it here first. Uh, please elaborate best in the uh in in what kind of way i mean i'm intrigued it sounds like you are going by your name at least partly asian i mean i, I know those things get confused a little bit And then bed because the clock go forward. Calm down, Painbow. You know it's worth the spin. I've got to. I've got to. You get it. I've got to try and uh, milk it out a little bit. So uh, I think I've got what ten minutes of your time. <clears throat> I should really put the uh, donate button here, shouldn't I? I think this is where I'm going wrong. Give me a second here. Uh, should that work? Yeah, it should work. So look, it fits perfectly as well. So if you want if you want to have a spin, you just need to scan that shit, or refer to the uh, link in the description. And let's go, pain bow. He's not here. He's 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 not here. We'll remember that though. I'll try. I'll try and uh, maybe I'll. If someone wants to clip this up, then I'll, I'll show it. So we, when he's here next time, we will fucking go to town on him as the intro to the show. Sounds good to me. But yeah, well, you know anyone else wants to contribute he's not here I know it's, it's a conspiracy it's rigged if you want another spin 
you know what you have to do. I I'm willing to uh, stick around. So they see, you know, Usually the best moments of the stream happen when I want to fuck off, so, uh... I guess that isn't likely. Lost slugging off. Uh, Chad Williamson hit two million subs. That's nice. A good looking guy who sponges off of the intelligence of other people who actually worked for, you know, their status. That's the world we're in. Hmm. See? It's not all over, apparently. But I think it's all over for me tonight. And, uh... Yeah, well, it's been one of those uh, evenings, I suppose. One of those fucking evenings. If there's anything you you want, you know, from the streams, let me know. <sighs> yeah, we can take it from there. I mean. quite like the fact that I'm ending this on silence. I mean, I know it probably it probably sounds quite strange. But it feels nice. It's just you not know, you not know, get that sometimes it's like you've just been either saying so much shit or watching so much stuff or using your phone or whatever and then you just kind of like take a moment to just be like ha <sighs> It's nice. There's nothing happening. You're just in the moment. And that moment is nothing. And that's all life ever is. It's beautiful. And you're totally right. That's the thing. But well, that's it, I, th I suppose. 
instead of uh, trying to milk it for a little bit more, it's not going to happen. The snow was dirty. Sounds good. I mean, I, I was actually going to potentially make a video on uh, the Tartar Step at one point because I actually think it's like the reality version of the hero's journey. I actually, I genuinely think that, like the beginning, the premise, everything is set up to be something that never fucking happens, and that is the reality of life which is probably why it's still reasonably obscure I mean it's it's kind of well known but not in the kind of uh, Camus less ninja kind of way it's more it's still kind of underground in a sense and it it, it depicts especially for men but I think just for human beings in general this ex expectation this fairy tale fantasy that you're going to go out and then things are going to happen but in reality the years disappear before your eyes and before you know it you don't even recognize the person you once were and it's it's all uh, disappeared basically and in a way, it's um, comforting. It's kind of beautiful. And maybe people need more of that now. I think, you know, there's, there's so much emphasis on this, like, oh, you need to do things. You need to take action. You need to be productive, bro. And all this. It's like, no, you need to chill the fuck out. There's nothing going on. And that's a good thing. You know. I I already did it, but I, I'm talking from a new, uh, maybe a new video perspective or whatever. In terms of like judging it, because it is it is basically the hero's journey, but without the fucking uh, bullshit kind of like oh venture out conquer return it's like no venture out learn that it's all the same come back dead <laughs> basically it's like yeah it's uh almost like um a parody of the hero's journey but in or ironically it actually depicts the yeah real life experience far more I have indeed. I have indeed. Um, good read. Yeah, I, I like Donatar. I could, uh, off the top of my head, I couldn't. I had slight issue with the, the slight. I guess. It's not really a twist, but it kind of is where the very thing that he's been protecting isn't actually there all that kind of stuff but yeah it's, good. it's a good read yeah if you if you grew up in that situation, then uh... <laughs> all right, I'm off. I've had enough. Been fun. Um, I'll be back, maybe at some point. I need to stop ripping into my fucking fingers. It's done. 
It's done now. I feel like it's all. Uh, that's the thing. I can't. I've got to spin the wheel. I've got everything, and you know, nothing to sell the product, unfortunately. Might have to go underground and just make videos for a while, you know. Gonna have to abandon you all. Because it ain't, it's, you know. We're gonna go to once a month, I think. Maybe once, maybe, may, all right. We're, we're, we'll try once every two weeks. And then whatever take it easy thanks for tuning in it's been fun um yeah i'll see you soon try not to die in the meantime and uh i've got nothing else to say i'm, I'm actually just going to end it fuck the credits i'll see you soon adios bye bye now Bye-bye.